Football with Mike Bellotti. There's Fife under center at the 44. Pitch back going right to Whitehead. Behind a block, nothing there. Cuts it back the other way. He's got a lot of room. Cuts it upfield at the 30, the 20, the 15, the 10. He's going to score. Look at that. Lewis under center, back split. Lewis snap from center, back to throw the ball. Pressure comes. He's hit. He's down. They stop him at the 15. He's sacked. Oregon's got the ball back. That's eight plays in a row from inside of the two-yard line, and Stanford could not score. And hello, everyone. Welcome to Oregon football with Mike Filotti. Not a better way to start it than to see it right off the bat. What a great goal line stand. What an emotional day for your football team. All is right in the world again. <laughs> Well, it's a much better day today, and, and certainly that defensive stand, I think, as I said, it's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen as a football coach. Secondly, I, I hope and truly believe that it can be a foundation for us for the rest of the season in terms of belief and performance and finally keeping people out. People will remember that goal line stand, and we're going to see it and talk about it more, but you really ran the ball, and you were determined to run the ball early, and you had great success on the ground. I thought Terrence Whitehead did it. An unbelievable job. We had a good performance on the offensive line. Not great. There's a lot of things we can improve upon. We lost our two tackles in the first play and first quarter. Uh, and I, I think give credit to the guys that come in and make it happen. But Terrence Whitehead ran with purpose. He made great decisions. He showed quickness, showed strength. Uh, I think early on he was going to get four yards. Our whole motto is get four before you get 14. And we've done a good job of making that an emphasis point. I think also the effectiveness of our quarterbacks, only throwing two incompletions apiece the entire game. They were efficient. They were effective. They did a great job. So much focus was on that leading into this game after the three consecutive losses, how the quarterbacks were playing. They played great. What happened in the two weeks? What was the, the point of emphasis in the two weeks leading up to this game? Well, the, the point of emphasis was fundamentals. It was just basically how are we going to do things to avoid turning the ball over, to have a positive running game, to make sure that we make positive yards, avoid long yardage situations, get in more makeable third downs. Uh, and it really it didn't involve necessarily a difference in play calling. It didn't involve a difference. Uh, you know, we changed some coaches in terms of where they were on the field or up in the booth. But it was really more our players and an emphasis on fundamental techniques. And I say that, too, not just on offense but on defense, too. We had uh, two interceptions by linebackers, which – uh, we haven't had that many this year. We got some touches on the ball. We played more zone defense. Not, not an exaggerated amount, but we played much better and understood our assignments. And just it was a, a comeback, a re-emphasis of fundamental techniques. Got lots of great pressure on their quarterback as well. And uh, we're going to take a look at it. We got a lot of highlights to get through, so we're going to go to it right away. And uh, Oregon starting out with the football. A great first drive. And, Coach, you come out in the lightning yellow. Something about these unis. Yeah, well, they're undefeated. That's certainly one thing. And, and uh, the kids like them. Uh, I think the fans actually like them. I think anything you win in, people like. So you start to run the football. Terrace Whitehead for five. Play scripted here, Coach. Did you come out knowing you're going to run the ball five, six times in a row? Yes. Well, again, assuming things go as norm. We have we have a script, and then if you go off the script because of a negative play, obviously you have to change. But Terrace did a great job of finishing runs and finishing going north and south. That's very, very important. Here's Whitehead for 10 more yards. So carrying the ball five times to start the football yes. game. Now out to the 50-yard line, and then... You got the running game established, so you go to Sammy Parker and get him involved. Yeah, and it's nice to have Sammy back healthy again. He got some cushion, got some respect, and nice choice by the quarterback to give it to the open receiver. Four th straight throws to Parker. There was an incompletion, and this one for Sammy for five yards on second and ten sets up a big yeah, third down Sammy. from the Here's Cardinal 35. The 35 of the Cardinal. Empty backfield. Three or four receivers set, back to throw. Clement sets up, looks, throws down. It's caught. First down, Sammy inside of the 20. Nice job here on the protection, first of all. Good, very good patience by Kellen Clemens in the pocket. You see the pocket develops. He steps up. He stays on Sammy. Sammy separates from his man, makes a nice catch. Ball turn a little bit behind, gets the one foot down. Excellent execution. What a great catch. He's great in the catch. air, goes up high for it. Then Clemens scrambling here, flushed out for just a couple of yards. Once again, third down, eight to go, deep in Stanford territory. Here's Williams right from the shotgun for Clemens. He's got the snap and looks. Here's the inside screen. It's caught inside the 10 and the 5 inside for the first down. Nice job again of setting it up the execution to draw the line in. Kellen Clemens, nice patience here, nice touch pass. 
Uh, Marcus Maxwell gets it. Great block there by, I believe, De LaGrange. And unfortunately, just gets caught from behind by a defensive lineman. First and goal from the three-yard line, the 13th First play of the opening three. drive. Give it two wide out at the middle. Three, two, one. He'll get in for the score. Terrence Whitehead puts Oregon on the board first. Nice line push, nice surge, and great vision by Terrence Whitehead. You see right here, ground level coming at it. He bounces behind the block of Dante Rosario, cuts back behind another lineman, and then really steps into the end zone almost untouched. It's really something your team needed. And then after Absolutely. the two weeks, yeah. well, it was a 13 play drive to score. Take the ball right down. Yeah, I think that was a very positive development. Equal running and pass and five and a half minutes with the ball. They come back with some different things. Luke Powell runs the option, and then Luke Powell. This is one of those, you know, wipe your brow. Exactly. We will be. And uh, they did a nice job of setting it up. They had Luke at quarterback. The first play ran the option with him, which surprised us. Then they threw that play, and we survived it, luckily. Lewis to Bradford for seven yards on third and two, so they pick up a first down. Then the Cardinal had a holding penalty, so we got a second and 20, and that's pretty manageable for a defense. They pick up 16 yards here, but third down, you start to get a little bit of pressure, you're going to get the ball back. Yeah, we, we did some good things with four-man pressure. Did a nice job of coming off the blitz look there to cover the back coming out. And uh, we're just trying to play more fundamental football, not beat ourselves. This is where Stephen Moore was injured. How is he, Coach? Well, it, the ankle is very sore. Uh, we don't know the extent of it. He was in a lot of pain at the time. Uh, the x-rays were negative, which is a good sign. We just have to see how it responds the next day or two. Ducks had a penalty, so back they go. Clemens. Yeah, nice job of buying time, working with Kellen to uh, get open as Kellen is scrambling. And then Clemens looking to uh, the freshman Dante Rosario. Looks like maybe his third or fourth choice. Nice, and it was. It was a nice catch by Dante, a nice job of getting positive yards after the catch. And then Sammy Parker with five more yards. Uh, getting Sammy the ball in lots of different ways Sammy in this game. Parker yeah, you know, our whole goal, as we've talked about, is 200 yards from every game, whether he touches it via the air, handing it to him, throwing it to him, whatever the case may be. Sets up a third and eight. Dan Kaus with a catch for seven. Fourth and one, you decide to go for it early in the game, trying to give your offense a big lift. Well, I try to get everybody a big lift. I want the team to understand that it's not taking chances, it's having confidence. They measured it, and it was a first down by an inch. Yeah. That's yeah. all it has to be. That's all it needs to be. That's so right. the first down, Whitehead for two more yards on this play, and then after a false start penalty, moves Here's it back Whitehead. to the 33. Clemens gets sacked on this play. Tough sack to take because you're in field goal range there. Now you're not have to put the football and that's the end of the quarter but still coach 27 plays to their six plays in the first quarter yeah I thought it was a great start in terms of keeping the ball away from their offense keeping our defense off the field offense was being very consistent running the football good mix and good blend uh, I didn't like the sack right there because we had a max protection situation shouldn't have gotten sacked but again those things do happen it's better than turning the ball over from an offensive perspective when you keep a team off the field like that and and from an offense getting in sync it was almost like the Michigan game where they just really couldn't get anything going because they just weren't on the field. Exactly. And, and again, if you can do that, get points out of it, not turn the ball over, that's even more and the better and, and more crucial to victory. All right. Not only does the uh, defense begin their trek towards a shutout, they put some points on the board as well. Pressure equals turnovers as the Ducks turn it on against the Cardinal. More Oregon football with Mike Bellotti coming up right after this. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Oregon on top 7-0. Let's go ahead and jump right into the second quarter highlights. Ducks uh, doing a good job. And the first play of this quarter, Coach, turns out to be a very, very big play with a loud crowd here at Austin Stadium. The freshman, Paul Martinez, great punt. Yeah, he, he did a very nice job of hanging the ball up and putting it. We talked about the wind behind us, so angling it to the sideline. He puts it out on the two-yard line. couple of runs for Stanford then after that punt, which is a real key play. Don't underestimate how important that was. They're back there in their own end zone that limits what they can do offensively. They run to Tolan twice for nothing. And then on third and eight, Lewis looking to throw out of his own end zone. And up under center is Lewis. Third and eight, Oregon looks like they're coming. Here they come, and they get to him as they intercepted. Mitchell at the 10, Mitchell to the five. Mitchell, touchdown, Oregon. Great job by our defense, great call, uh, pressure call by Nick Aliotti and his defensive staff. You see we have Jerry Matson coming off the edge, 
and you'll see him come off from the left side of the screen here. He gets a piece of Lewis, boom, right there. Can't follow through. And uh, Kevin Mitchell does a great job of sinking underneath the receiver. Then makes a great move right there to make a receiver miss in space. And then it's a la fullback, chuck it in the end zone. Here I go. I mean, great job. Forget Sammy on defense. Maybe Kevin Mitchell needs to play fullback <laughs> once or twice. He he said, I, I'm sure he loved that. That's a great interception, first of all, down there. But then to get in the end zone, too. Robbie Valenzuela trying to lay a block out there. And a great job, just great individual effort. Second touchdown of his career. He had 11 tackles on the day. He's been solid all year long, leading Oregon on defense. Nice move there, and a 14-0, Oregon with the lead. Stanford back with it for 14 on first down. Really one of their best plays of the day. Yeah, Chris Lewis, is a, he's a very fast athlete, very good athlete. They, we lose contain right there. He makes his pay for it. To J.R. Lemon this time for 21 to the Oregon 26. So this is their best drive so far. They're finally getting something Lewis. going offensively. They give it to Kenneth Tolan for four yards right here. But Keith Lewis was around the football all day in this football game. Keith Lewis played well. He made some plays. That was Marley Tucker on a big stop right there. Then again, Keith almost picks this one off. Anticipated very well. We're in zone coverage. He can sit back. He read the quarterback, read the route. Almost makes a huge play. They try the field goal. The shutout preserved for now as the kick goes wide right. Defense tightening up when they had to. Oregon gets the ball back, and Jason Fife Jason comes into the game, the and he looks right back at Terrace one Whitehead. Back behind it, two receivers left, one right. He'll go back to throw. Looks, looks, pressure comes. Here's the screen. They got it set up. Whitehead with the ball. 20, 25, 30, still on his feet. 35, out to the 39-yard line. Nice job by Terrence uh, with the individual after the play. Nice setup on the screen. Jason Fife, very patient back there. Let's the rush come to him. Dumps it over the top. Uh, nice blocking out front. Nick Stites there with a key block. Terrence cuts back on one, two guys. And then again, just a Terrence nice job. And it's tough when you know you're going to get hit from behind. That's a, a mark of a true running back to protect that football. Great block there as well by Demetrius Williams at the end of the play. Sammy involved as well. Whitehead for eight Whitehead more yards the there. Field. And then Jason Fife looking for Sammy Parker. Going to find him for nine yards on the slant. He almost gets away on this one. Sets up a second and one. Good time to try Way something downfield. Right-hand side. And back to throw again. Pump fake. Want to go deep over the middle. And it is sliding catch made to meet Chris Williams. They give it to him. They do. Nice catch here by Demetrius. Again, we're uh, looking off. Coming back to the middle here. Ball's thrown just a little bit low. But Demetrius, very nice job. Sliding under. Gets his arm underneath the ball. Great catch. 20-yard pickup on the play for uh, Demetrius Williams. He had a couple more like that later in the game that didn't turn out the same. But... Uh, that play was open for Oregon. Five to Maxwell for 14 yards well, to the nine. First and goal ten. for Jason Five. Five under center. Whitehead behind him. And he'll go back and throw. Set up on a play fake. Gonna look it up. Now gonna run. Cuts it inside of the five. He might make it. He will make it. Touchdown, Jason Five. Nice job again. Set up by the effective passing going in. We're on a play action pass. Uh, they do a decent job of covering the onside receivers. Uh, Good play fake there. We wash them down. You see a huge hole in the middle. Jason, he's taught right now to tuck it and go. If he doesn't like what he sees down the field, doing a very nice job because he's a dangerous weapon, and he gets in the end zone. And he just flat out beat two guys. Yeah. Nobody blocking. Just maybe he can play running back. You can have five the tailback, Mitchell the fullback. He's had uh, three of our longest seven runs on the season. This is a great play, Coach. One of the great plays in the game. Keith Lewis comes from all the way on the other side of the field, knocking him out right there at the three-yard line. Great effort. And again, it's one of those things of don't say that. I don't concede anything. We get feet on the play. Keith comes from the offside of the field, as you said. Really a great effort that, again, I think epitomized what we did yesterday on defense. And you can see the fans in the background really appreciating that hustle because he had about a 10-yard head start on him. He stops him. And then Lemon, for no gain, sets up a third and goal. And Lewis has sprint across the field, pays off when David Martin steps in. The only back, three receivers to the right for Lewis. Back to throw, Lewis checks, throws. It's intercepted! Intercepted, and the Ducks have it inside the five-yard line. Great job by David Martin in this zone coverage. He expands from one receiver to two receivers. He can sneak out there, gets right in the throwing lane. Great anticipation, stays inside out, which we worked on for two weeks, and it paid off. Actually held up the tight end and then slid off for the pick. Great play. Vincent for two yards. Gives the Ducks a little room to take it deep. Second down at eight and play fake back to throw five steps up in the end zone. Throws it way downfield. Sammy's there. He's got it. He's down inside of the 45-yard line. Nice job here again. Uh, great play fake by Jason Fife. 
He does a nice job then of stepping up in the pocket to avoid the rush, then a perfect throw down the field to Sammy, who's beaten his man over the top of the free safety. Coach, you told me that you hoped Sammy would have a 200-yard day at 105 in the first half. Yeah, and, and we're working well. We think that the, the offense is scripted to basically give him the opportunity to touch the ball and to gain that many yards. Chris Vincent hit after a gain of four yards. And then Jason Fife again looking for Maxwell. Again, Coach, your quarterback's just not throwing in completions all day. No, and again, the efficiency of what they did was extremely important to, to the success of our offense. Decided to go for it here on a fourth and a little more than a yard. Had the quarterback draw set up, but a penalty lined up in the neutral zone, it looked like. And so uh, you're going to have to go back and punt the football. But you give them the uh, football back. I know that's frustrating as a coach to see that happen. It, it was because we had the play, and then we do a good job of uh, getting that punt down inside there. You see Chris Solomon, a nice play right there. Back to the five-yard line after that, and Oregon gets the ball back right before the end of the half. He picked up a first down, and then uh, Terrence Whitehead on a carry there, and then a long field goal before the end of the half was no good. So that's where we are, 21-0, to zero, and... Uh, that's great. 21-0, to zero. you must have felt very very good about how your team had played with a lot of emotion in the first half. I did. I was disappointed not to get any points out of that last opportunity because we stopped and we used timeouts to ensure the opportunity, but we didn't get it. 21-0, I, I, you have to feel good. I, I think that, again, we were playing very efficiently in all aspects of the game, and that to me is the huge key. If you don't break yourselves down, you give yourself a chance to win. For a team that hadn't had a lot go right in the last four weeks, really, if you count the bye week in there, uh, at halftime, what was it like? What were the players doing at halftime? I and mean, they must have been very excited about how they played. The crowd was into it. You know, they weren't. They were very calm, and it was interesting because I talked about what we needed to do, what we'd done well, what we needed to do even better in the, in the thing, and, and basically they understood that it was half the game, didn't really mean a lot at that point in time, but, but there was a very calm, almost a reassuring like calm, and it scared me a little bit as a coach, but uh, we came on the second half and played very well. We well, talked about confidence. Maybe it was a quiet confidence at halftime. I, I think it was. And the Ducks came out and played uh, very well, and of course I know you're all waiting for that goal line stand. We're going to show it to you coming up. When we return here at halftime, though, the Ducks leading it 21 to nothing, playing defense, a little like a former Duck star who decided to take a break from the NFL for a trip across the country to be with his old team, and that is not him. Please do not come to my house on Halloween. You'll scare my kids. Oregon football with Mike Bellotti continues right after this. Welcome back to Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Now, if you're an NFL fan, you probably hate the bye week like I do. However, it does give college football fans a chance to catch up with some former stars. This week was Holiday Bowl and Fiesta Bowl star Rashad Bowman, who was back in town. The second-year player with the Washington Redskins gave the team some motivational words before the game. He spent the day on the Ducks' sidelines, where he says he felt right at home. You know I mean, it's always good to come and just check out where you used to play and, and hear the scream of the crowd for, cheering for some guys that, that you don't really know too much about, you know. Um, it's always good to come back to Oregon. I'm glad to be back in Austin. You got any advice for the guys who are playing the secondary now? Just play all out, you know what I mean? It's, it's hard being a corner, that's for sure. Everybody in the stands know what you did wrong and what you did good. So take the good with the bad and, you know what I mean, just keep your rebounding and keep stepping up. Great to see Rashad Bowman again. All right, Oregon's 12th Hall of Fame class was inducted over the weekend. Some big names and some great recognition for some pioneers when it comes to women's sports. Inducted into the hall and introduced to the crowd at halftime Saturday, Debbie Adams, a two-sport athlete in track and basketball, along with Dean Krauser, the school record holder in the shot foot and discus, a three-time NCAA champ. Also, Paula Berry, Barney Holland, volleyball player Terry Kramer, Janet Woodruff, Roscoe Devine, and unable to make it to the ceremony, the snapper, Steve Jones, famous broadcaster and star basketball player for the Ducks in the early 1960s. All right, that brings us to this week's internet poll question. We'll start out with last week's question of the former Ducks. Who will make the best head coach? And the choices were, of course, Jeff Tedford, a landslide victor, Billy Musgrave with the Jacksonville Jaguars, Rich Brooks, John Robinson, Dirk Cutter at ASU, and Bob Toledo, as in O, as in zero votes there for the former UCLA boss. Now, on to this week's question. What do you think is the best way to overhaul the BCS system? One game, 14 playoff, go back to the conference bowl tie-ins, or blow the whole thing up. That might be an idea. Go to KZI.com, click on the OSN link, and cast your vote left side of the screen. 
and we'll have the results for you next week on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti, which will return to the action and Terrence Whitehead capping a huge day at Austin Stadium and hitting pay dirt again from long range. So Oregon Football with the coach continues right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Third quarter action, going to go right to it as Oregon uh, trades a couple of punts here right at the start of the quarter. So a couple of three and out. Stanford's going to start with the ball on a beautiful day. Well, what is it with this? We playing in Southern California? It's always this way. A beautiful day in the Emerald Valley. Sunny on one side. I know it's cold on the other side for a lot of fans in the shade there. But uh, heating up on the field, tolling for nothing. Mitchell and Junior in there. And then Chris Lewis going to hit Bradford here for 20 yards. Bradford sure had a nice game. He's a good receiver. We knew about him, tried to recruit him. He committed early in the process. So he's, he's a very good receiver for a true freshman. Lewis, and then, then incomplete to Luke Powell. Almost didn't get the turnover there. Oh, yeah. It's Almost unfortunate that our own aggressiveness caused us not to get that turnover. We don't get it there, but the next play, Oregon does. Lewis. He's running back beside him. Two wideouts to the right. Inside handoff. Total Fumble. Fumble the ball. It's loose and still loose. And still loose. And now finally falling on, and I think by the Ducks. It is. Oregon's got it. Great play here uh, by Igor Oshansky. You see he's double teamed, splits it inside, then watch him reach out right here, punch the ball out. Great individual effort, great play. We got a couple chances to get it. We want to scoop and score if we can, but we want to make sure we get the football. And I think Marley Tucker is the guy who finally comes up with the bottom of the pile, but a lot of ducks there, a lot of hustling, uh, great individual effort. Under center at the 44, pitch back going right to Whitehead. Behind a block, nothing there. Cuts it back the other way. He's got a lot of room. Cuts it upfield at the 30, the 20, the 15, the 10. He's going to score. Look at that. You know, you want to make, make people pay when you get a turnover. And again, sometimes you want to go with the big pass play. We decided to take a toss play, toss sweep. Terrence Whitehead does a great job here. It gets strung out a little bit. He sees this. He cuts back. We get great pursuit blocking angles right there. Then he puts a little move on right there, tucks the ball, and hits it. And I'll tell you what, he showed great speed and great vision right here. Very excited, very proud of Terrence on that play. 28 nothing, kind of a spirit buster for Stanford. And now the defense really putting the screws to Chris Lewis. He's just getting blistered out there. As, uh, every time he throws the ball, he's getting it. Bradford for four yards. Mitchell and Dorsey make the stop. And then on this play, he's sacked, and he just gets hammered by Matson. Yeah, Matson comes untouched off the edge there and uh, sort of exclamation point on the whole thing. Ball was down because the ground caused the fumble, but it's great, uh, obviously, to get pressure on the quarterback. Now, Justin Finnessy, he almost had that pick earlier. He gets his pick after being around the ball all day. With a snap. A lot of time. Throws it way downfield, and it is intercepted. Oregon's got it at the 45-yard line at Stanford. Great job. Justin was not to be denied on that one. After having the chance earlier that Keith Lewis broke up from his hands, he makes a great break on the ball. We get great pressure on the quarterback. See right there, he's throwing it. Ball's up in the air. Justin plays center field, backs up. Great job, goes up high point, taps the feet down in bounds. Interception, change of possession. Over there in the darkness of the sideline for Stanford, everybody was wondering about the sideline when it was so hot yeah. earlier in the season. Well, here's a great case where you want to be in the sun. You come right back, great play to Demetrius Williams, but a penalty brings it back. Yeah, and, and that one bothered me a great deal. We're misaligned. We didn't have enough people on line of scrimmage. And we do a lot of shifting in motion, so sometimes it can be confusing, but we cannot allow that to happen. Kellen, very cool. He comes back and just does the same thing. Great play here. Unfortunately, we don't hang on the football. And that was unfortunate because our quarterbacks did a great job getting the ball to the receivers. We need to support them better. Williams hit from behind. You can almost see that one coming since he didn't know the defender was there. And that ends that play. The first of two fumbles in this quarter, Coach. Uh, offensively, maybe struggling a little bit in this quarter, but defensively getting it done. Great job by Quinn Dorsey at a sack. Uh, the quarterback continual pressure. Nice job here. Unfortunately, we lose contain on this situation uh, because we do such a good job rushing. And again, but we do, I, I think they gave him the first down right there. Uh, but we got to keep contain. Rodney Woods delivering the blow there to Chris Lewis and then incomplete to Camarillo. He's Never comfortable in the pocket all day. Right, and I think that again. And that was a lot of four and five man rush, which is good. Second down and 10, and so Kenneth Tolan takes it for seven yards on this play. And again, great pressure. Here comes everybody. Just gets rid of the football short of the first yeah. down. And then just got attacked in the space, which Quinn Dorsey does. So fourth down, they're going to punt it, or they line up to. No surprise here. 
No, we had our safe group in. A great play, though. Still, you know, you never know how they're going to react. And we do a great job. Nice play by Devin Long. Nice play by David Martin. Uh, that's huge because that's big field position change. Misdirection play and uh, the defense playing with a lot of emotion. Then Parker for 10 yards. Very interesting play. Yeah, well, we've worked it. Actually, we've run a couple times this year. Just comes off the toss sweep and uh, gives us good compliments to the play. And again, the drive looks pretty good. This one to Maxwell, but it's stopped by a fumble. Yeah, and unfortunately, we never got the handle on that. The ball was out early. He didn't secure it. And, uh, you know, that's a, a huge point, which you made an emphasis point from the very beginning about possession of the football, ball security, and we'll continue to do so. Especially with a 28-0 lead, trying to just kind of keep the clock going in this game. And Lewis to Bradford for 24 yards. Uh, make for 13 yards on that play. This one is the 24-yarder down to the one-yard line. And that's the end of the quarter, and Coach, that's going to set up something that's kind of fun to talk about. We're going to wait to talk about it, but the third quarter offensively, I know it's a matter of intensity and trying to keep your offense going because they had it going early, and third quarter maybe they lost it a little bit. Well, we turned the ball over twice, and you can't turn the You don't get that many possessions in a quarter when you turn it over, and we got the turnovers come back, but we just we really didn't run that many plays in this game, and it's sort of interesting. But I was frustrated by that because our defense was playing very, very well, but offensively we had chances, didn't take advantage of them. And the defense is going to take it to the next level, that's for sure. Coming up next, is it the defining moment that turns around an entire season? The amazing goal line stand, all seven plays of it, and an inspired Oregon defense cruising towards their first Pac-10 shutout in a heck of a long time. That and more next on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti after this. Welcome back, everyone. Time to get on to the fourth quarter action. The ball sitting on the one-yard line. A lot of folks thought maybe Stanford are going to get on the board here, Coach. Your team had other ideas. Yeah, I was disappointed we let him get down there on the one play, but uh, pride here shows up also. Igor, huge play coming off the edge, slanting inside to stop the back in the backfield. Lemon loses a yard on first down, and then on second down, Lemon, nothing. From the outside, Kevin Mitchell, hard there. So it's third and goal for Lewis the Stanford Cardinals. Third down and goal. From the shotgun, Lewis, snap. Back to throw, looks, looks, pressure comes and got him back at the 12-yard line. Unfortunately, again, in that play, we did a great job coverage-wise down the field, Good, got some pressure, quarterback got his eyes come down. At that point, we've got him sacked. Unfortunately, inadvertently grabbed the face mask. Uh, it's half the distance because the, ball, the line of scrimmage was a two-yard line. People forgot that. I forgot it, to be honest with you. But now it's first and goal from the one again. So here we go again from the one-yard line. And for a half yard, this one gets right to the goal line, so they try to sneak it. Chris Lewis, look at, see, look at Mitchell. Yeah. They pick up his legs and pull him back, so coach. We can tackle him and get him down. Third. Actually, they lost yard. They lost about six inches on that play. So now it's third down again. Right. Double tight ends out of the eye. Lewis under center. Lewis, snap, turn, give it a lemon. Lemon, nope. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. They stopped him at the one. That's a great, uh, great team effort right there. You can see we're filling all the gaps inside. We're coming off the edges. Great get off. Great pressure to allow, not allow any push at all by the offensive line and then rally to the football. So here we go. Fourth and goal. Seventh play from the two-yard line or less. Lewis under center. Back split. Lewis snap from center. Back to throw the ball. Pressure comes. He's hit. He's down. They stop him at the 15. He's sacked. Oregon's got the ball back. There was a little improvisation there on the field on the dance play, but we, we were deciding. We knew they'd come off tackle with a play-action pass, design something to keep pressure coming off the edges. Felt like we had a chance, and we did a great job of coverage down the field, made the quarterback hold the ball for a count. We got to it. Lots of emotion as the team came off the field. The offense congratulating the defense, and that momentum carries over to the first play. And Clemens will back and hand the ball off, trying to go up the middle, not much there. And finding through is to me is a Terrence Whitehead. He's off to the races. 40, 45, 50. Hesitates and now will go out of bounds up at the Stanford 43 yard line. This is great patience uh, by Terrence and great vision. He actually goes under one block, over the top of the next, underneath another, cuts back, keeps working. We're working on the block, staying on blocks, keeping a hat for a hat. That's very important. And then Terrence just ducks through there, changes the ball to get his off arm ready to go for the straight arm. Runs his speed, trusts his speed for a while, and then decides discretion the better part of valor, which I appreciate. <laughs> 42 yards on the run, 172 on the day for Terrence Whitehead. 
Going to see a lot of great football out of him over the next few years. Clemens to Vincent. Ball comes out, but fortunately goes out of bounds. Third and 12 here, Coach, and a grounding call coming up. Yeah, and this was a very, very poor call. Again, uh, throwing, there's the receiver right there. Regardless of whether the ball is catchable or not, there's a receiver in the area. He was five yards from the original position. So, again, that, this there were two or three calls of that could have been called in the game. That was the only one that was. I'm still trying to figure it out. Carbon copy coming back the other way. And in the pocket. We were out of the pocket. That guy was in the pocket. And that's... Again, you know, officials uh, are only human. They try to do the best that they can, and I and I do think they do a great job. Lewis to the outside to Kenneth Tolan for no gain. Keith Lewis right there. Keith Lewis said that he really played within himself in this game. He didn't try to help everybody else and took care of his business. Well, that's important. I think one of the things when you start playing zone defense is your safeties have to understand their roles, too. Bad sack right there. That was on the quarterback. He went over the top of the protection. Uh, he learned, though, later on came back the other way. Whitehead gets four back. Clemens to Parker. Here for 13 on a third and 14. Buy some time and nice catch by Sammy. So another fourth and one. Nobody expecting Backs this. Backs out of the eye. Rosario, the uh, fullback, and back to throw the ball. Clemens to throw. Swings it downfield. Wide open. Catch. First down. All the way down to the 17-yard line. Ryan Lawson, I think, is the name he was searching for. Not the most often used tight end, but again, pressed into service. Very good receiving tight end. Good, solid blocker. Uh, does a great job here sneaking out there. Nice patience by Kellen. Nice touch pass over the top. Ryan, big play on fourth down. Nice to see guys like that that work so hard get a little sugar once in a while. Makes a nice catch. Ducks in scoring range now, and Whitehead, nice run for nine yards. Very nice run, because there we did not get a hat on a hat. He just made two people miss, cut it back, and then got north and south. Then the big guy does it. Rosario pushes the pile for three, and then Coach Rosario going to take it into the end zone for a yard out to cap the scoring on the day. He can do that. He can move a whole pile. Yeah, he can. His, his pad level there could have improved, but he saw an opening hole. He jumped in. We got good line surge on the right side. 35 to 0. The only thing now. The shutout. Coach, guys talking about that a lot. Got to get the shutout. No, no, we didn't. I, I think, but we all knew it. I think everybody knew what it was and what they wanted to accomplish, but no, we didn't talk about it. Matter to Moore. They call it incomplete, and then uh, Kyle Matter comes in the game. He's the young man who played last year against Oregon at the stadium, and a little surprised maybe that they didn't go to him earlier since Lewis had so much trouble. Nice scramble here. Yeah, he did a nice job. He really came in and, and got him going a little bit. Really had two plays to go to the end zone. This was the first. Boy, I thought the second one was going to be good. This one, each one, the receiver got a hand on the ball. Yeah, and, and you don't like to see that. I, that ball up in the air on the next to last play of the game ought to be a swarm of ducks, and that ball should never get touched by a receiver. And this one a little scary because two hands on the ball that yeah. time by the Stanford receiver. Nice play by Justin Finnessy to break that up. But the shutout is preserved. Picked up some big turnovers, lots of pressure. Don't ever go against the Ducks on a bye week. The guys say they were prepared for a breakout game and a recapture, the most important thing, recapture the identity of Oregon football. We played with intensity. We played with heart and desire. And uh, it was it was exciting, you know. It's, uh, people always say that's something we'll always remember. And uh, we were able to keep them out. We uh, got the shutout. And uh, it was a big confidence booster for our defense and hopefully for us as a team. That was awesome. I mean, uh, I've never been a part of anything like that. I mean, I don't know what, seven, eight plays, and they couldn't move it a foot. I think it was great. And I think that's uh, kind of a turning point in our season, you know. I think it's kind of a building block that we need to build off of as a defense. And the offense loved it. And we just rallied around that, uh, that whole series, or those two series, basically, and uh, kind of stuffed it up there, you know what. We needed some confidence, and I think we got it with this game. I mean, pitching the goose egg is, you know, is a good builder, and, you know, we're going to carry this thing on out. Oh, you know, for us, to coming off that skid that we went on, um, you know, to get a victory like this, no better feeling, you know. It just makes you totally forget about the three losses and tell, it, and tell it us basically to focus on the second half of football. We had a good day today, and, you know, that, I think, stemmed from the running game and how effective we were there in the offensive line play. Um, when we run the ball like that for, well, one guy at 172 yards, um, that definitely helps take the pressure off of us. I think the main thing that um, really attributed our confidence today was our emotion, and that stemmed from the last two weeks of practice going head-to-head -head like we were. Every drill last year, last week was a competition, and uh, you know, that contributed greatly to our success today. He just said he's gonna give me the ball a lot. He said that it was gonna make, he's gonna give it to me, let me make some plays. And when stuff wasn't there, you gotta, you gotta do it on your own. You gotta be able to uh, 
break some tackles and, and do stuff like that. It's just, a, like I said before, a factor of everyone doing what they needed to do on offense to get the job done. And, um, you know, we, we got the, the yards that we needed. We, we got out of some bad situations. We, and ultimately, we, we went down and we scored, which is what we've been kind of trying, trying so hard to do these last couple of weeks. I would say, you know, saying the team is you know, saying pretty confident, you know, saying what we did today. But, I mean, we can't just rest on that. I mean, just because we shut them out and scored 35 points, you know, saying that next week, you know, saying anything can happen. So we just got to, you know, saying just suck it up and go out there, you know, saying hopefully, you know, saying we get the same type of effort and practice that we did, you know, saying the past two weeks, you know, what I'm saying for the next following week, you know, saying hopefully, you know, saying that uh, leads to another W. And coach, maybe a lesson for your team hard work going to pay off eventually. Yeah, uh, you know, I hope so. I think that now we have to figure out, you know, what to do this week. But uh, <laughs> the reality is we, we did create a more competitive environment. We asked and demanded more of them, and they responded. And certainly, I think Stanford uh, uh, is not one of the top football teams in the Pac-10 conference, but obviously on any, any given weekend in this conference, you have to play great football. To shut out a team in the Pac-10 is a tremendous accomplishment, no matter who it is. And for us, that's a good building step, a good building block, stepping stone for the rest of the season. And four big ones coming up, all against very good football teams, two at home, two on the road, starting with the Huskies. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, show you some interesting video as well. Coming up first, though, with all the talk about uniforms and locker rooms and recruiting, it's time to make a connection between this beautiful new building on campus and this new building. That one right there, Academics to Athletics, next when we return on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Welcome back to the show, everyone. From Bill Musgrave to Joey Harrington and throughout the Oregon football program for years, the academic side of this football team is one that doesn't get nearly enough recognition. A leader in the Pac-10 when it comes to graduation rates and a leader when it comes to cooperation between academics and athletics, nowhere is that more pronounced than with Oregon's nationally renowned business school where recent expansion there is helping the Ducks on the field. Take a look at Oregon's newest football recruiting tool. No, it's not the impressive expanded Autzen Stadium, new uniforms, or a state-of-the-art locker room with a video game. But the Lillis Business Center, that's right, the new business school. We've heard so much about what attracts student-athletes to come play football. Well, the truth is, investment here, home to the world-famous Warsaw Sports Marketing Center, is an investment here, too. I think that it's a way to separate yourself from the competition once again. Uh, you know, individuals that have an interest in it, uh, might be, it might be a way to, to break a tie between two schools, two institutions. I had an opportunity to go to a couple different schools that are nice schools, and I just looked at the business program itself, and I really was impressed with it. So that's kind of what took me to here versus a lot of the Pac-10 schools. Both Matson and Siegel are successful business students and really exemplify what the term student-athlete means. In fact, Siegel, who we've seen go a long way on the football field. He hit it! Jared Siegel at a 59-yard field goal! Is poised to go a long way in life. He's ready to graduate during his junior year. He'll have an entire senior season to work on his master's in business. I pride myself on being a well-rounded individual, and I try to excel in all, all facets of my life, uh, whether it be on the football field or in the classroom. And believe it or not, that kind of thing does get noticed in recruiting for football, as does the Warsaw Center, which has been named by several Oregon football recruits in the last few years as one of the reasons they chose Oregon. Certainly, the parents of those young men can see that an upgraded facilities on each side of the river are investments in their kids, a two-way street that makes both stronger. You know, at the end of the day, it's been, you know, a great thing to see every time the you know, recruit says, and particularly the high-priced, you know, the, really the ones you want to get to help build an athletic program to say, hey, you know, the Warsaw Center played a role in my decision. We feel real good and, and feel like we're, we're adding value to the athletic department's recruiting. And the proof is in the numbers, whether it's a three from 55 or a 3.55. And Jared Siegel, both uh, Siegel and Matson, doing a great job. But, uh, you know, we're talking about enough, Coach, but really what's happening over there does affect recruiting. And that parents are very adept at knowing it's not just about football. Well, parents and players both want to know about academics. They want to know their graduation rates. They want to know what type of opportunities they have in the various majors and then the quality of the schools they're going to. And we're very proud and pleased with what we have to offer here. And the Warsaw Center is doing a great job on campus. And, uh, and Joey Harrington was a, a part of that. And uh, they continue to do a great job on campus at the University of Oregon. All right, coming up, the Huskies. Get ready to see this video all week long. And you can bet the Oregon players are going to see it too. Rivalry time as the Ducks head to Seattle when Oregon football with Mike Bellotti returns after this.
Welcome back, everyone. All right, on to Seattle and the Huskies. Should be a very inspired week for this Oregon football team. Plenty of storylines. Of course, uh, Coach, starting with their great wide receiver, Reggie Williams, as we take a look at the uh, Washington Huskies. They got beat by USC big, but Reggie Williams is maybe one of the greatest players in the country. He is. He's absolutely difficult, so difficult to defend because he's tall, he's fast, he can catch a short pass and make a long and go deep on you. Uh, and you can't pay too much attention because Charles Ferguson on the other side is very, very explosive. As, as Oregon State found, he can beat you too. And, and Cody Pickett is one of the best quarterbacks when protected in the nation. They improved their running game. Rich Alexis, I know, is running much harder, and they've got some young backs too that they like. The defense is emerging in my mind, and, and again, you see some interceptions there. Uh, it's sort of a no-name defense, but they're fast and they're aggressive. They do give up some big plays, though. Washington uh, losing to USC, giving up 44 points. But they've been able to really diversify their offense. They go to the tight end. They do a lot of different things. Yeah, they're very balanced. They're a little bit different this year under the new coach, Coach Gilbertson. So, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how we respond to the prosperity we had from this past game. And you know there will be plenty of emotion in this one, especially when the Ducks get to look at the celebration the Huskies threw out at Autzen after last year's win. You know, we've had some great games with Mike's teams. Um, that thing that happened last year, you know, uh, I'm sure that is a rallying cry for him. If, if, uh, if it is, it is, you know. Uh, I had no responsibility in that. I'm not sure I thought it was the best thing to do, but I wasn't the head coach either. So we'll just play this year. We're, you know, we, we, we have a rallying cry too. We, want, we, we think we have a good football team and we're playing in our stadium. And, so they'll be as, it'll be as important a game to us as it will be to Oregon. And nothing like the Ducks and the Huskies. No, and I, I'm not sure they can attach the same importance that we will have for this one. But we'll see. We'll find out. We'll find out. 7 o'clock start at Husky Stadium. Sold out game. National TV on TBS. And then Sunday, of course, we'll recap it right here on the show. Coach, again, thanks for joining us. Congratulations thanks. on the win. Thanks, Joe. For head coach Mike Bellotti, I'm Joe Johnsonde. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And we'll see you next time on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti.